Uh, greetings. Uh, let us review the management of colonoscopy complications. In the last uh, two to three years, we have seen a lot of publications looking at big data and reporting the complication rate of colonoscopy. Over the last 15 years, what we have seen is mortality from colonoscopy is low, perforation rate is also low, and the bleeding rate has steadily decreased. Overall, the track record for safety is excellent and continues to improve. When you are about to perform colonoscopy, you should look at the age of the patient and also consider the non-GI events like cardiac events, cerebrovascular events. Typically, we report or share with our patients complications like perforation, bleeding, etc. But as the age advances, cerebrovascular accidents and cardiac events predominate. That is more so when you're performing a colonoscopy in the elderly, those reaching their late 70s and going into early 80s. How about the impact of screening versus diagnostic versus therapeutic colonoscopy on complication rate? Overall, screening colonoscopy is safe, but when you add any intervention, including biopsy, the complication rate increases. And when you undertake therapeutic procedures like polypectomy, EMR, or ESD, the complication rate jumps even further high. So this is important to keep in mind and counsel the patients depending upon the type of the procedure that you're undertaking. In the last uh, two decades, anesthesia is utilized, has been utilized for colonoscopy and we are worried about the risk of aspiration, the risk of perforation, and the risk of splenic injury when patients are deeply sedated. In this large study from Canada, what they've shown is, as we have understood, the risk of aspiration under anesthesia is higher than those without anesthesia assistance. However, it did not pan out for perforation and splenic injury. When it comes to mortality, although bleeding is common, the 30-day mortality for bleeding is lower than that of perforation and splenic injury. Something to keep in mind when discussing complications. Let's talk about post-polypectomy bleeding, especially whether we need to hold clopidogrel or not. In this randomized control study of over 200 patients with small polyp resections between 5 to 8 millimeters in size, continuing clopidogrel did not increase the risk of either immediate or delayed bleeding. Again, holding clopidogrel did not increase the risk of cardiothrombotic events at six months. So something to keep in mind. How about direct acting oral anticoagulants? This uh, large database study showed no adverse impact. But what we have learned from that study is that patients who are on warfarin and bridge therapy patients with high CHAD scores, patients with high comorbid index, and those who undergo EMR are at higher risk for bleeding. 
So we have gone through an overview of all the complications. Let's uh, figure out how to uh, not only prevent and treat post polypectomy bleeding in the setting of a pedunculated polyp resection. There are two big meta analyses. Uh, including a recent one, the third one, which demonstrated that patients with large polyps, one to two centimeters or larger, are at high risk for bleeding. And by applying prophylactic therapy, you could cut down the risk of early bleeding, but not delayed bleeding. Among the options, a combination of mechanical therapy plus epinephrine is better than mechanical therapy and that is better than epinephrine injection. So when you have a large pedunculated polyp with a thick stock, I would typically use epinephrine injection and depending upon the length of the stock, either I use a loop or multiple clips. How about post palopectomy bleeding and flat lesions? There are two large studies which assess the risk of bleeding, one from Spain and another one from Australia. And let's look at at least one of them in detail. If you have a patient who is older with a high ASA score, a large lesion in the right side of the colon, it gives them a score of 8 to 10. That means their risk is very high for bleeding. And these patients would probably be treated uh, to cut down the risk of delayed bleeding. So when you perform EMR, recently Michael Burke's group has shown that after the resection, a large polyp resection, if you see three or more visible vessels, those lesions are at high risk for bleeding. And uh, this group should be treated. In terms of management of bleeding, if you see bleeding during the procedure, Michael Burke's group has shown that uh, snare tip soft coagulation, effect 480 watts helps. And if it doesn't work, you could use a hemostatic forceps with the same settings. And sometimes if the vessel retracts under an edge, you could consider applying a clip and you could hold on for a few minutes. And if you still have to resect more, you could reopen and continue your resection and then come back and treat that area. How about preventing delayed bleeding after large flat lesion resection? A retrospective study from Doug Rex's group and last year, and then which was published in this year's gastroenterology by Mike by Heiko Pohl has shown us that large polyps, when you apply clips, you cut down the risk of delayed bleeding and the impact is much more in proximal lesions compared to distal lesions. Some other concepts that are being evaluated include the use of one person polydocanol, which has a thrombotic effect uh, has been shown to cut down both immediate and delayed bleeding in large polyp resections. And recently there is an interest on spraying a self-assembling peptide gel onto the resection base, but the literature on this is very limited. Let's talk about perforation management. There are two basic mechanisms of perforation, mechanical injury and electrical injury. Mechanical injury could be due to hockey stick injury, barotrauma, and retroflexion injury. And these could be avoided by using certain maneuvers, changing the position of the patient, considering using routine use of CO2 or water immersion, or picking a thinner instrument if the regular instrument is not going down the colon, and sometimes using the assistance of balloon-assisted endoscopy. 
you could examine the rectum without retroflexion uh, by decompressing the rectum and examining the lower rectum, thereby avoiding retroflexion injury. How about thermal injury? Whether it's polypectomy, EMR, ESD, or APC, could cause damage and perforation. And you would be able to limit that if you learn the impact of electrosurgery on the colon wall. Let's look at the structure of the colon wall, mucosa, submucosa, muscle, serosa. The submucosa is the strongest layer. As long as you preserve the submucosa, you are likely to not get into trouble with delayed perforation. And uh, how do you minimize the muscle injury and preserve the submucosa? One option is to consider lifting the polyp with submucosal injection of saline or one of the other solutions that are commercially available. And when you apply the snare, apply the snare parallel to the wall and avoid muscle entrapment. You could find out about muscle entrapment as you close the snare and find the relative movement of the polyp above the snare and the tissue below the snare. If the tissue below the snare tries to crimple a lot more and the assistant is telling I'm having a hard time, you need to release the snare and distend the colon and allow the muscle to drop back and then close and then cut. Once you cut, you need to examine the depth of your resection. Is it limited to the superficial submucosa, as you can see here? or deep submucosa. As long as there is no muscle injury, injury limited to submucosa, these lesions do not develop delayed perforation. However, when there is damage to the muscle, either superficial or deep, you should consider closing those defects to prevent delayed perforation. And how about if you see a perforation, what to do? If you diagnose the perforation in the endoscopy room, you need to consider what is happening. If it is a large perforation from a mechanical injury, which is difficult to close, you should consider prompt surgery. If you notice spillage of contents into the peritoneal cavity, especially in the setting of a dirty colon, again, you should consider surgery. Small perforations from thermal injury in the setting of a clean colon with no spillage of contents into the peritoneal cavity, endoscopic closure works. We have three different options, clips through the scope, clips over the scope, and suturing device over the scope. The, among these three, clips inserted through the scope we have a lot more experience, easier to use. You don't need to leave the field. You can apply it immediately, unlike with the other two devices. When it comes to clip closure, I would like to share with you an important uh, trick. That is, every clip as you close, it tends to retract. And unless you compensate for the retraction by either moving the scope or pushing the clip gently, asking your assistant to close the clip slowly. As you do this maneuver, you could achieve deep approximation with the deep closure. Once you close, you need to take photographs to document that your closure is on both sides. Uh, and then it is mucosa to mucosa. And a deep closure, I mean, you don't see any gap between the two blades of the clip. A clip that is, you still see a gap is a superficial closure, and these clips tend to fall off and the perforation may reopen. When you ask a surgeon to operate on a patient where you have applied clips, it, they may have difficulty uh, to close with the laparoscopy, and uh, if you have not uh, pro acted promptly, 
Sometimes there is contamination of the peritoneal cavity and these patients may need a diversion procedure. When it comes to perforation management, uh, especially when you diagnose perforation in the post-procedure uh, time, if they're asymptomatic, conservative treatment. If they're symptomatic, operative treatment. And whether it is a repair or resect depends upon the size of the perforation. Small perforation, clean peritoneal cavity, repair works. Peritoneal contamination, when it comes to large perforation, perforations with severe diverticulosis, perforations with underlying cancer would, resect, would need a resection. I hope this review is helpful to you. Thank you.